Hey guys, I'm Robert Oliver. Welcome to the Journey to Union podcast where we explore ideas to be more present, live in the moment, block out distractions, and ultimately find your purpose. Let's dive right in. Today's guest is Edward Lee, a good friend of mine, successful entrepreneur, phenomenal content creator, and we're just going to dive right in. I mean, Ed, I could probably just go on and on, but you want to do a second and just kind of introduce yourself? For sure, for sure. Well, first off, thank you for having me on the podcast. Absolutely. Uh, it's an honor. It's like it's like the first first episode I think that's going to go live. So it's nice to be here. But my name is Edward. I am a uh, content creator, business owner. Um, I mean, you're, you're, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. At the end of the day. I, I just mean, I just like building stuff and creating things with an unbelievable aesthetic eye. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> who uh, isn't familiar with Ed, just go check out his YouTube or I mean, literally anything, any of my videos that are that are published as well. That's his work. I'm terrible at that stuff. And then he somehow makes it look relatively passable uh check out his youtube check out his instagram it's just just fire so. dang that premium gas i mean it's, it's, it's true right like, that I mean, premium it's, gas no it's just true that's that's nice i like i appreciate that man um yeah so i guess we can just we can jump into it i think you embody um you know a lot of this whole idea everything we're trying to kind of create here so i mean you're the, the perfect first guest um you know i'd, I'd love to kind of ask what is it that you felt drew you to your passion um, I would have to say it starts off with me just having that desire to just, I, I'm really fascinated by the idea of creating something from nothing. Mm -hmm. I think that that whole process just really fascinates me. That could just be like product development, building a brand, building a business. So for me, it translates into content creation, but literally like content creation, for example, you're, you're creating an idea. It's literally nothing yet. And then seeing a finished product, it's just super fulfilling for me. So I think that's, that's kind of how it stemmed. So like a photo and video. And was that, like that always there? Was that something like, like it, it, what's your earliest remembrance of that, that passion or that, that, you know, uh, probably, probably all the way back to like middle school. I mean, back when I got my first, uh, phone with a camera on it, I was a little bit fascinated by that's kind of like way back in the day when they started to get like that aperture low depth of field mm -hmm. on the phones and then you take a photo of like something and there's like a blurred background you had I fun playing with it i was like yo this is crazy uh from there i picked up my first camera like canon rebel something cheap uh from costco and then pretty much it started i think it, it was more so just an excuse for me to get out of the house mm -hmm. and and collab with people we were doing like senior photos. A lot of my friends were like, yo, let's just take some photos. So just going out and being able to create something. I think that's how it first started. You had fun with it. I had fun with it for like sure. It enjoyable. Exactly. Yeah. Like I, I had no idea that it was going to become a business. So when did you know it could be, when do you know you could like do this for like, when did you know you could, you could pay your bills on this on Pro you? Dang, honestly, probably, probably not till like three years ago. So after high school, after a couple years, um, I think once I got my first gig that was like $500, I was like, dang, there's some money. Here. Th this, this could be something. And that was like the only 500 I made that year from it. Cause I was still like caught up in, cause you know, like when you're first starting out, I think people, social media kind of paints this picture of everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone got everything figured out, which is not the case. Like <laughs> me. The case, yeah, yeah. So for me. I started making a little bit, a couple bucks here and there, but I was like, no, nah, I got to get a real job. I really got to like, you know, I got to make something of myself another way. This I can't pay the bills with this. Mm -hmm. But I think slowly, like as that momentum builds up, one gig turns into two gigs, two gigs turns into three gigs. And then you're like, oh, whoa, I could actually pay my bills with this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind so, of the transition. Yeah, no, absolutely. So on, on that note, and this is one thing I think a lot of people are always curious about, how did you fight like conformity? Because obviously there's like, you know, there's social pressures, there's parental pe pressures, like there's all sorts of shit steering you to that nine to five life or whatever you might want to call it that, mm -hmm. you know, um, how did you steer clear of, of conformity? Ah, uh, man, that's kind of a, I think there's a lot of different ways you could take that, a lot of different answers you can take to that question. But I don't know, for, for me, like in high school, there was this weird feeling deep down inside. I don't know, maybe it's something that all, business owners have felt at one point or creatives or maybe just even more broad than that. But there was this thing inside of me where I always thought like I'm different. And I don't know if that means anything, but I always just thought to myself, like I'm, I'm always different. Like I'm always trying to think outside of the box. And I think that kind of helped me take those like baby steps towards not what society is trying to train you to become. So for example, like just on that, like 
real world examples my parents they didn't believe in me at first with photo video mm-hmm. i mean they're typical asian parents but they want me to go to a, get a good job be a doctor yeah doctor what? accountant finance like my first major was pharmacy mm-hmm heck no dude I, I took my first human anatomy class and i was like that's that's not it for me but that's what society but tells you to do steered that way even exactly from parents, right exactly so parents the school system and so when i was like i'm gonna do photo video there was a there was a time where i thought i was like i'm gonna become a failure but i'm just doing this because i think it's fun were you always like when you were doing that were you always engaged in it like you were active you were getting like you were photo video in. yeah like you you were learning fast you were yeah, I would say like I'm a fast learner, but it was a it was a progression. No, no, definitely, yeah, definitely. That's but that's what I'm it saying, is. Compared to like sitting trying to learn the the shit for pharmacy school. You oh know? yeah, yeah. You're saying like how did how was it, how was it different? Yeah, yeah. Like it was cr- it was crazy different. I didn't feel like I was learning. Yeah. I think when you truly are passionate about something, you're learning, but you're kind of just living in the moment. Yeah. And taking it all in. And you look back and you're like, holy shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. You look yeah. back on it, you're like, whoa, that was a lesson. Mm-hmm. But at the time, it felt like an experience. You know, wasn't really like school. Didn't feel like that. So circling back kind of on that whole idea, right? You said you said you always felt felt you were different. Um, like I felt that too, right? I mean, I, th- I think. Do you think everyone feels that? And then it's just a matter of some people collapsing to the societal pressures or you know the shit life throws at you and falling off that that path and losing kind of sight of what their vision or intuitive sense might be what's your mm-hmm. what's your or what's your yeah. take on that i know it's kind of a, a deep yeah, more yeah philosophical question no it is it is i like it though i like it um i've actually thought about that a lot because i i always i was always that one friend in high school oh, a little bit after high school where i was trying to get everyone to get on that like entrepreneurial you, grind you and like, me both, like yeah i'm always trying to get my friends like when i see them doing a job that they don't like, like and they're coming to me it. about it i'm like yo like let's start something then mm-hmm. like dude there's so much opportunities out there i was that guy always trying to spread those opportunities always trying to creatively think of someone's passion and how it can turn into a business but then you give those tools to some of your friends and they just don't they don't apply it or mm-hmm. maybe it's not a friend maybe it's an acquaintance they just don't apply it into their real life so, so for me, I've come that to ex- kills you, doesn't yeah, it? but then yeah, I've, yeah. I've come to accept the fact that not everyone is gonna think that way. Because, because in reality, if everyone thought that way, then we wouldn't have the the society we have, the, the economy we have. Like, who? I'm not not trying to sound rude, but like, who's gonna flip burgers at McDonald's? Like, there's some people. I'm not gonna say that some, everyone at McDonald's is super unhappy, super unfulfilled, living a terrible life. There's some people who work, you know, low paying jobs like that, and money's no object like for them happiness is a different side not just from their work you know Mm -hmm. like for me people like me maybe you and i both we find fulfillment and happiness through our work um not everyone is that way though (laughs) for me no i mean for me there were just hard lines and and, you know we've talked about this a little bit like i feel like there's a lot of different things that contribute to that right like environmental factors are huge right so if your friends are stuck in the same routine regardless of what kind of information they're presented with they still probably can't apply it right like that's one thing but one thing that for me that always felt like carried me there were some things i would just rather fucking die than conform to like Mm -hmm. like really like like truly would would rather not be alive than you know sacrifice like what kind of things like flipping burgers at at burger king yeah yeah. or or like double crossing somebody or like i've just had these things I've, i've been reflecting on lately where it's like yo this is these are things I'm willing to die for. And I feel like that's carried me to, and that sounds like intense or dramatic, but I feel like that's something that's carried me to a certain point. Like on that point, uh, I believe you are the company you keep, right? You probably, I think a lot of people as they get more successful, they understand that. Like you can't be with people not doing shit. Um, But, but on that note, like truly I'd rather, (laughs) I mean, I'd rather fall on my sword than like screw someone in my circle, like for real. Um, So I think things like that have continued to aid and I don't know, attract the right people and right, success definitely um, yeah so that's yeah. got i mean just to say that a little bit how how i know i mean how much do you think environment like your environment played in that like not conforming you mm-hmm. know building those those principles in your life and and growing your squad to where it needs to go like do you feel like environment and where you are has a big um had a big role in that i mean i think i think it's huge yeah. I, mean, I, I think it's huge I've, I've been blessed with a couple really really you know tight people around me that have always like held it down and, and been the right sounding boards and, and been on their shit too. Um, so those people have helped. And then I think I realized that early that like, yo, we, we control factors of our, our environment. Like, it's kind of like the simple idea. Um, like we don't have unlimited willpower. So if you don't want to be fat, don't buy a bunch of crap at the grocery store. 
like you're going to eat it if it's in your fridge. Like, like that's one saying I like to, and I always tie it back to fitness, but you know, that goes for everything. Like if you're on your phone, right. When you wake up or not setting the right habits, like those will be self-destructive. So being conscious of your environment and then trying to shape it in a manner that propels you forward and then realizing it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Like that's been critical for me. Like it really is just this ongoing marathon. The long game. It is always the long game. It is with incremental progress. Like shit doesn't happen overnight, you know? Facts. Um, so we kind of got a little sidetracked. On yeah. that one, but I mean, that's the beauty of the podcast, though. For sure. That's why podcast is awesome. You can just go down any little rabbit hole you like. And, and on, on see, that's where, too, I, I guess if I answered that, like, I think everyone has some element of being different and has something that calls them. But I just think, I mean, you know my take on, I think society is set up to trap you. I think society is set to take you away from the present moment and just, oh, there's so many traps. Yeah, I know. We can get we can get technical and we don't have to go too deep, but just just like the idea of school system where you go after school and then how you buy a house how you buy a car all, all yeah. these systems are in place to keep you running to, yeah exactly to trap you and then like why why is the average retirement age where it is like wh- like who set that you know mm-hmm. what i mean and and in order to retire at that age there's process there's systems that they put in place to get you there you yep. know and and then they even paint they went even as far as to paint that that's a successful person so people like start to to strive for for that lifestyle and yeah so it's it's a it's a crazy trap it, it, it really is so all right put, pulling back just a little bit um kind of on that note i mean you're proficient like you crank stuff out really fast i'm curious how do you go about blocking out distractions and then staying fully engaged in your work yeah. Um, I think, I think I first got to start off by saying, um, I don't always perform at like the hundred percent level. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's also a thing that social media has done to people is that people he's, he's lying. <laughs> no, I'm trying to work as, as hard as our boy Kev, you know, our yeah, boy yeah. Kev, he works hard. <laughs> shout out Kev. Yeah, back shout then. out Kev. Um, but I would say for me, a lot of it has to do with flow, like in yeah. terms of like I, there's definitely energy waves that I ride. Definitely. So for me, I'm a content creator. So when it comes to editing, like if I start for like an hour and I start to feel like there's def- there's literally a rhythm, like mm-hmm. a flow you feel and I just ride that wave. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's kind of how I start to block out distractions. I mean, of course there's a thing that people say, like put your phone away, um, those kind of things. But in terms of like literally like zoning in, you have to really ride the energy, that positive energy that you feel around you in your environment. When you ride that, I think great things come from that's it. That's when a sprints are made. That's when a sprint, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think once you just understand and you're self-aware of the energy in your life and you cut you off the- control it, Yeah, right? and you cut off the bad ones and you, you stick really close to you the positive the ones you and you just start making like strides, mm-hmm. whether that's your business, your life, it could even be relationships, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's kind of how I, I guess, block out distractions is just trying to find that positive energy so, always. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. In some ways it sounds as inspiration- based too yeah Um, so on that note how do you how do you find creative inspiration like i feel like you're always seeing things drake drake (laughs) shout out Drake. i turn on that ovo brand ovo sound slide (laughs) no um is that what it is though you you draw a lot of from you know from from creators and from people yeah i would say i try i try my best to limit um content from like the social media level in terms of like Instagram and YouTube too much. Cause if I focus too much of my efforts there, I, I think comparison trap gets the best of everyone. Definitely. Like, if someone says they don't compare themselves, they're lying. Everyone compares themselves like low key, even though they don't admit like, it. Like, yeah. They, and they, if we don't like it, we still are subconsciously. Exactly. Still have an exactly. So for me, when I try to draw inspiration from like in a creative block, um, I actually look at some of my old work. Some mm-hmm. of my old work, um, where I was, Respect, yeah. yeah, where I was, will help me understand that, okay, maybe I shouldn't compare myself because I'm way farther than I was a year ago, two years yeah. ago. And that, that inspires me. Another place I get inspiration from is probably like movies and just more high end stuff that I know is, is way out of my realm. That inspires me because yeah. it, I know that like, I can't compare myself because wh- how would I compare myself eventually to that? You're working to get there. Exactly. Exactly. But it, I draw inspiration from that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when it's too close to home, you're like, Oh, sh- this sh- that should be me. Should that be me? Yeah. You know, so when it's too close, I don't draw inspiration from it. So I guess for me, it goes like my own work, then like high end work and then like kind of social media, YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how the tears go in terms of where I draw inspiration. Nice. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, we touched on this a little bit, but like just for everyone out there, fundamentally, what motivates you? 
just like at the end of the day what gets you out of bed in the morning what gets you going um it's so funny we just uh, it's so funny because i go into a little tangent right here but me and christine so my wife we're we're building we're like remodeling the house and we had to flip it upside down to get it to where we need to go because it just needs to be cleaned and all that kind of stuff and what i'm trying to get at is she was just super overwhelmed she was like how, how like it looked like a mess she's like how can you even have the motivation to get to that finished point that you want when it looks like this um and i guess to answer your question I, I, I'm always looking at the end goal. I think that's where I look at it. Even, even us, like, I mean, we're starting Rosie. Um, shout out Rosie. You guys will probably hear more about that uh, in the coming months. But just being able to see where it can go, even despite whatever it looks like right now, yeah. that motivates me. Absolutely. Like, it kind of it kind of pushes all the BS that's right now to the side because I know that the potential of it, where it can go, and that, that literally just motivates the heck out of me because I'm like, dude, I know we can get here. So you're never even thinking end goal. You're just thinking process. Exactly. That's beautiful. Yeah. Just moving stuff aside. You That's know? beautiful. I think so many people get caught up in end goal. Like I've been guilty of this. And then you, you reach some goal. Yeah. It's like really cool for, you know, a week, two weeks, a month. And then yeah. you're just like, it doesn't no. matter what it is. But if you're like in love with the process, then every day is what you want. For sure. Because awesome. the, the end goal... I guess it's always, it's like goal setting, right? Goal setting can help you or hurt you. Like if that's all you do, it's, it's the problem that some people make is like they'll set goals, right? Like new year comes around, they set goals, but they don't talk about the process to achieving those goals. Right. They just like, so, oh, make hundred K. Yes. Make a million dollars, buy this car. But those are all like, those are, um, those are like cause and effect. That's like what the result of the process is. It's exactly it's, you know? a, a quote stuck with me the other day. I feel like you'll, you'll appreciate this one. Um, but it's, uh, winners and losers have the same goal. Like, like yeah. winners and losers have the same goal. So don't focus on the goal itself. Focus on the systems in place because those are what will propel you forward long term. Mm -hmm. um, That's so true. So I love that. I love that. Oh, that's awesome. Um, all right. So big question here. And I think this is uh, entrepreneurs are romanticized in today's world. And obviously, you've been a very successful one uh, at a young age, too. So, I mean, that that's awesome. What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? I feel like that gets muddled nowadays <laughs> with Instagram and all that. But what yeah. does it really mean to like, <sighs> man, I don't know. I got to give this a little bit of thought. I think, like you just said, entrepreneur, like that word has just become super sexy nowadays. Like everyone's calling themselves an entrepreneur. Like yeah. they'll work for a company as a salesperson say they're an entrepreneur, you know? Because well, they got that like YouTube channel they just yeah, started or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. And so... Um, I think for me, an entrepreneur, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's two, it's two things. What makes it a true entrepreneur, in my opinion, is are you creating something like what are you making and does it have an impact? Like mm -hmm. what problem is it solving? Yeah. So if you, if you can answer those two questions, like very clearly, um, I think you can, I think that's what makes an entrepreneur is like you're solving a problem and are you creating something? Mm -hmm. Those two things, if you're doing those two things, then you could be an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Like that's what all entrepreneurs are at heart is that they're creating something um, and they're solving a problem. You that, know, that's the big one. Solving. Like I, I get yeah. asked all the time, like, how do I, how do I start on Amazon or, you know, like, like I want to do this product. Where should I, you know, whatever. And I was like, first, like what niche are you filling? Like if mm -hmm. you're just copying, you know, the next thing or me or whatever, like I don't, yeah, like I don't know that's always missed the for mark sure. for me and I haven't seen that really be super successful so that that's I'm happy you hit on that like solving a problem is yeah huge. and I think too like a lot of times and this is a big one as well like entrepreneurs I think if you really want to be an entrepreneur you have to outwork everyone Definitely. I think I think right now present day 2020 the idea of just like not working, traveling the world, and then just somehow having a million dollar business, just like building it's silly, itself. Isn't it? But that's, but that's what people are getting sold to the idea of like that overnight success. Like you said earlier, so someone's making a lot of money selling those courses. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like that person's probably traveling the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just feel like you have to be able to put in the work that no one else is willing to is nonstop. Yeah. You, even sometimes it's mental too. Like it might not actually be like the physical hours you put in a day, no, but it's always on your but mind. It's always on your mind. Mm -hmm. Like if and you're planning owns to own your headspace, like. exactly. Like those people who say like, Oh, like you only can, I just work two hours a day, but guarantee they're probably thinking about their business all day. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They might be working on the computer for two hours a day, but that doesn't mean they're not working all the time. I think it's the people that think like you could literally work for two hours, not think about your business, not think about growing it. 
and then trying to get somewhere it needs to go is just like not possible. So yeah, no, absolutely. Hard absolutely. work definitely defines, I think, an entrepreneur, in my opinion. It does. And then, so how about, how about this too? This is a statement that's always stuck with me. It's old Bezos thing that um, really changed how I thought. Cause I've always, always felt like I can outwork. Any, like I just feel like I won't quit. Like I just feel like you could knock me down. I'll just keep coming. And then there was a Bezos statement that said, uh, you can work harder or you can work smarter, but you can't work both. And that stuck mm. with me. Like it, it took like a year for it to sink in. But basically what he's saying is you can like the way he's built Amazon and how efficient they've been. You can't like put in man hours to overcome their systems and like the uh, intelligence and effectiveness. Obviously, that dude is a hundred hour a week, you know, grind, grind, grind. So obviously the hard work is, you know, it goes it fits right in that. But how do you feel about that? And then how do you apply kind of that idea? Because you're you're super efficient and you've always mm -hmm. relied on systems. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, what does that statement mean to work mean to you? Uh, I mean, I think it's very true. I definitely think that there are a lot of things in life when it comes to building your business that you can be smarter at mm -hmm. for sure. Like, I think you have to find that that fine balance between our. Do you feel challenged every day? Like, if you feel challenged every day, and then you can ask the question is can you do something quicker and more efficiently yeah i think if you're trying to like work smarter by just not working that's that's like a whole nother thing oh no 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 um, totally i just mean like yeah like as you're building something from the ground up like the importance of systems right because if oh, you're yeah, bogged yeah, down yeah. by like even like your accounting right mm -hmm. like if you had to manually go send invoices every time versus using you know software that spits out an invoice or yeah, whatever yeah. that type of stuff for sure. How important has that been for super important? Cause I think you have to value yourself at Absolutely. like you have to value, you have to find the value in yourself and your time. So definitely, for example, if you have, you know, eight hours in a work day, let's say you're spending six of that editing. Yeah. You're getting paid for that. But think about the, the cost, your the money you're losing by doing that task for six hours, or maybe it's accounting mm -hmm. or maybe it's something else like something that could be a VA could do, you mm -hmm. know, for six hours and not you for six hours. So, you could be making money during that time. So I would, I would challenge everyone who's running their own businesses, figure out those things in your life where you're like, okay, I could be out making money and then this part could be automated. At Value a cheaper your price. own time. Yeah. Exactly. Value your own time. No, that's beautiful. Well, Ed, I don't want to take too much of your time here. I feel like this has been a, a, um, a fantastic conversation across the board. I mean, tell everyone what's next for you. What was, 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 what's 2020 hold for, Shoot. for Edward Lee? So for 2020, um, I'm building a team right now currently, and we're going to be starting a company where we just become pretty much a brand for the brands. Um, something that uh, I don't like to use the word agency. I feel like the word agency is just played out right mm -hmm. now. Um, we're just trying to trying to re trying to evolve what it means to to build a brand, to develop a brand from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So working on that, um, building a really solid team right now. We're putting in a lot of work. And then also just trying to grow my personal brand. Um, I think I have a similar mission to you in a sense where I just feel like there's a lot of things that it took me to get to this point and I just want to share it with the world. You know, yeah, like yeah. I, I'm not the type to, when you call me, when you ask me, like I'm, I'm fully transparent with everything that I know. Mm -hmm. um, Cause when I was first starting out, I just didn't want those people who would like low key not tell you how they got there. And that just really got under my skin. He did give me the presets by the way, so I can, <laughs> I can factually speak to that. It took a, <laughs> took a little time, but that's where my Instagram feed. No, Go no, ahead. no, no. <laughs> Basically though, all like, facts. I just, I just love providing value. Mm -hmm. I find a lot of fulfillment in that. So I think not just 2020, but all the years moving forward, I think I'm just trying to provide value where I can and just build something meaningful. Build, build, build. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate the time. Um, hopefully have you back again soon. And, uh, till next time. Yep. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks.